pack, they want to create a century and they don't even know the date when it is written down. It is more for political motives that the Indian politicians want to make a thing. But these Hindu Indian politicians don't know that they are going against their own Veda by making a political issue. Hope that answers the question. Thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, the, I, I hope the next mic is working. We'll allow two questions at that mic because in the last round it was just being set up. Yes, sister. Two questions from that mic. First one sister, the sister after that can ask the second question. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Kalpana. I wanted to ask few questions regarding medical fee. Basically, is family planning allowed in Islam? And why generally people prefer MTP, that is medical termination of pregnancy, rather than your TL. And it's very difficult to convince them. For a TL, it's very easy for them to do a MTP. Why is it so? Sister, being a medical doctor, she has given some short form MTP, TL, which may go monster to the most of the audience. But I, being a medical doctor, I know what she's meaning. This is another question about the concept of family planning in Islam and why it's easier to convince the Muslim to do MTP means medical termination of pregnancy rather than TL. TL means tubal ligation. That is a permanent method of family planning. So I club both together. As far as family planning is concerned, it's a very big concept, planning the family. And mainly people plan the family and they want to prevent having children, etc. So what does Islam say about this? As far as family planning is concerned, all permanent method, whether it be tubal ligation, TL, what you mentioned, whether it be vasectomy, any permanent method of family planning in Islam is prohibited. Secondly, any abortion, any MTP, medical termination of pregnancy, it is prohibited because you're killing a life. Unless it is a danger for the life of the mother. If the mother's life is in danger, that maybe she has multiple cesarean section. And if the doctors say that she has had four or five cesarean section, one more cesarean section means detrimental to her life, or she has some heart problem and she cannot take the strain of undergoing one more pregnancy. So in this case, the Islamic Sharia says, let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. The life of the mother is more important than the life that is going to come in this world. In this situation, these methods can be used as a last resort. Any permanent method, whether it be tubal ligation, whether it be vasectomy, whether it be medical termination of pregnancy, only in these cases. Any other cases, it is not allowed. Why? I'll tell you later on. As far as the other methods, one of the most common methods is the copper tea. Now, copper tea, why it's prohibited, all these methods? Because Quran clearly states in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 151, that kill not your children for want of sustenance, for it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give sustenance to you and your children. Allah repeats that message in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 31. Kill not your children for want of sustenance, for it is Allah who will give sustenance to your children and you. For killing of children is a major sin. So based on this, killing any human being is prohibited. Even the life that is going to come in this world, all types is prohibited. As far as the other temporary methods are concerned, there are different opinions in the scholars. First, the most common, as I mentioned, is the copper tea. Now, in copper tea, when I was in the medical college, I was taught that it is a contraception. But what happens in the copper tea? The copper tea prevents the ovum and the sperm have already joined to form the zygote. But the copper tea prevents the zygote from, click, from clinging on the uterine wall, on the wall of the womb of the mother. So it is nothing but a very early abortion. So Islamically, those people who know about the medical science, even copper tea is prohibited. As far as there may be difference in the other temporary method, whether it be condom, whether it be other method, once a person came to the Prophet and told him that I used to do uz, that is coitus interruptus. I used to stop the act so that the fluid doesn't enter the body of the wife. 
and the Prophet was silent. Those people who are in favor of certain temporary methods, they say Prophet was silent, he gave permission. The other group, Prophet was silent, he didn't give permission, different opinion. But I go back. Why, what is the reason that a person wants to do family planning is my basic question. See, normally a doctor, when a person has a headache, you give aspirin, you give crocin. It is not a cure, it is a symptomatic treatment that the threshold of pain is increased, so you don't feel the pain. But that is not actually curing the disease. The best way to cure is to kill the germs. So first let us find out why do different human beings want to do family planning? Whatever reason you have, you can broadly club them into two broad categories. The first category is for poverty. You know, I'm poor. If I have many children, I cannot make, you know, I will, for me to live itself, hand to mouth. If I have children, then I will also die. The other group, they are rich. I have no problem about money, about money, but I want to make my son a doctor. I want to make my son an engineer. You know, so, they have family planning, so I can bring my children better. Inshallah, we'll discuss both the cases. As far as the first case is concerned, regarding those people who are poor, Islam has a solution to this problem. In Islam, the third pillar of Islam is zakat. That is, every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level, more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of that excess wealth in charity every lunar year. If every rich human being gives zakat, poverty will be eradicated from this world. There will not be a single human being who will die of hunger. So if your problem is poverty, Islam has a solution. And the person who takes zakat, he is not being degraded. And the person who is wealthy and giving zakat, he is not doing a favor on the poor man. Because God gave him wealth, it is his duty. He is not doing a, fo he is not doing a favor on the poor people. And the poor people when they take, it is not that it's an obligation they have. It is their right. So if poverty is the problem, we have a solution of compulsory charity that is zakat. If every rich human being in the world gives charity, poverty will be eradicated, there will not be a single human being who will die of hunger. Now the verses of the Quran I quoted earlier, two verses. Surah Anam chapter 6 verse number 151 and Surah Isra chapter 17 verse number 31. On the face of it, both appear similar, but there is a difference of chalk and cheese. The first verse of Surah Anam chapter 6 verse number 151 says, Kill not your children for want of sustenance, for it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give sustenance to you and your children. Surah Al-Isra chapter 17 verse number 31 says, Kill not your children for want of sustenance, for it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give sustenance to your children and you. The order is reversed. First verse says, you and your children. Surah Isra says, your children and you. On the face of it, it's the same. Now why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reverse the order? Everything has a hikmah behind it. So the scholars, the mufassirin, what they say, the first verse, Surah Anam chapter 6 verse number 151, refers to the poor people. You know, if you have more children, even I will die, and even my children will die. So Almighty God says, don't worry, it kill not your children for want of sustenance. It is Allah that will give sustenance to you and your children. The first verse refers to the poor people. The second verse for the rich people, I've got no problem of money, but if I, if I have spacing, if I have less children, I'll make them doctors, I'll make them engineers. So Allah says, kill not your children for want of sustenance. It is Allah will give sustenance to your children and you. Order is reversed. Now what is the solution for people who are rich? That's the second category. Just for your knowledge, I would like to tell you that I am the fifth child of my parents. If my parents would have done family planning, I wouldn't have been here. Do you think I'm a boon or a bane for society? You know, in the world, in society, best profession, doctor, medical doctor. Best is medical doctor, nothing better than that. Alhamdulillah, even after being the fifth child, I became a medical doctor. But, I became a doctor to serve humanity, but when I found a better profession, Allah says in Surah Fusila chapter 41 verse number 33, وَمَنْ أَحَسَنُ كَوَلَ مِمَّنْ دَوَيْلَ اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحَوْا 
Qala inna lilna muslimin. Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord, works righteousness and says that I am a Muslim. When I found a better profession, I changed from a doctor of body to a doctor of soul. If I was a medical doctor, I am surely there is more than a lakh people here. They wouldn't have